How's it going, guys? And welcome to Out of Bounds with your host, James Kermit. On a Friday, we made it. We finished the week. I don't know how you got through it, but we did. And for a gift, for your reward for making it this far, you get me. You get some sports talk radio. I really appreciate it. Like we say here, the motto, could have been anywhere in the world. But you chose to be here for 30 minutes of sports talk with me. Before we jump into the show, and believe you me, it's a stacked show. It's stacked. It's nasty. We're talking college football. We're talking college football playoffs. We're talking winners. We're talking Rob Ryan. We're talking, we, we are revisiting 10 bold predictions for the NFL that I made about 20 shows ago. Exciting, exciting, exciting news for the podcast and for everyone that has supported. Have you ever heard of the Bill Simmons podcast? Have you ever heard of the Joe Rogan experience? Have you ever heard of these shows? Nerdist. Any of those shows? We have been accepted through an application process to be hosted and promoted on the Stitcher app. The Stitcher podcast app, Stitcher.com. They have accepted our application. It's not like iTunes. iTunes accepts everyone that kind of follows their guidelines. Stitcher only accepts certain podcasts. They only promote certain podcasts. They only... You gotta, you gotta have a certain criteria, and we match that criteria. And so now we are on Stitcher, which is huge for us because a lot of people use Stitcher to find new, new podcasts. Uh, podcasts get a lot of play on Stitcher; they get promoted. But it's very, very important that just like iTunes, you have to rate the uh, the podcast. So if you want to help me out, and if you want to help the show out, and if you want to see the show grow into maybe more than twice a week. Maybe longer than 30 minutes. Go to Stitcher. You can download Stitcher from the App Store. You can go there on the website. Search Out of Bounds. Search James Scrimetta. Whatever you got to do. Find the show. Rate it. Review it. Share it. All that stuff. So that just adds another component of how you can find us. Along with iTunes. Along with Audio Mac. Along with my website. JamesScrimetta.com. And of course... The YouTube simulcast version of the podcast on my YouTube page, along where you'll also find the James Comet experience. So I just want to thank everyone that made it possible for the, the podcast to be added to Stitcher and for everyone that supported and, and got us this far. You know, the podcast gets a lot of plays. At the very beginning, it was getting almost none, 10, 8 views. Now it's not rare to see a podcast climb into the triple digits. And uh, to put that in kind of perspective, the shows on like ESPN or uh, Fox Sports during the day, the ones on TV, they get about 40,000 people watching. And we get about anywhere from 100 people to 150, somewhere around there, that tune into what we're doing. So if you look at it like that, that's not too damn bad for a guy who's sitting in his in a spare bedroom rocking and rolling with no production team at all. So thank you again to all the people supporting. Y'all are the reason that this has done so well and the reason that I make sure I do this every Friday and Monday. So keep on sharing, keep on supporting. I really do appreciate it. Y'all are the absolute best. Now today, like I said, we're stacked. We're going to go college football playoffs first. College football playoffs. Look, I got in a little bit of, uh, of, a, of a jousting match on Twitter with Gunk, who the listeners of the podcast know. And another media professional from Knoxville, John Reed. We we were talking about the college football playoffs and the rankings. And they were talking, and I said, I don't think Notre Dame deserves to be four. They don't even deserve to be in the conversation. I got a little bit of backlash because they were saying that they do deserve to be in there. So I want to talk about that here. I want to talk about my feelings on the playoffs and my feelings kind of on the whole thing. The college football playoff ranking committee system is so flawed, it makes me sick to my stomach. It honestly does. I can't stand it. I cannot stand the committee system because it's so subjective. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. The BCS at least had numbers. The BCS had numbers and all that stuff. The committee is just a bunch of people randomly throwing teams around. There is nothing that would stop them from moving a team three or four places, jumping teams. The, the system doesn't make any sense. And if you look at one through, si- one through 
Seven, right? All right. Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State. Totally get why they're in there. Totally understand it. Notre Dame's at four with a loss to Clemson. All right? Not a bad loss. No problem. But if Oklahoma State goes undefeated, then they're obviously going to get in the conversation. So why put Notre Dame in there right now over an undefeated Oklahoma State when at the end of the year, if it was the exact same scenario, they would flip? Does that make sense? They Like, Iowa is five. Okay, Iowa cannot finish in the top five if Ohio State is in the top five. Iowa is not reg- regarded as some dominant team. People believe that Iowa would get beaten by a bunch of teams. So why do they keep parading Iowa out there at five every single week when they know that at the end of the year they would have no problem dropping them for Oklahoma State or any of these teams, or Notre Dame for that matter? So the committee, my problem with the committee is that from week to week, the rankings are an absolute joke. They don't mean anything. They mean literally nothing. Like the BCS rankings was, okay, well, I can see now from a statistical standpoint that I have to jump this many points to jump this team. I can see the point gap. I can see what I'm fighting against. With the committee, if you want to see who you're fighting against, just Google search Condoleezza Rice and click images. That's it. It's just random people. And, you know, I'm not. Whenever people are involved, you also think, well, they, they could be judging on. They could be playing a game. It could be a deal where ESPN puts out these ratings because they want certain games to mean certain things. You know, let's put LSU at a certain level so that LSU-Bama is a higher-ranked game. Don't be naive enough to believe that that's not the case. I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying that there is a chance that that's what's going on, that the rankings are like, they're like puppet masters. What I believe is, this is how I think the committee should be, I think the committee should be a lot like our top five that we do here. We do a top five solely based on how the team is playing then. It has nothing to do with a preseason ranking. It has nothing to do with week to week, like, oh, well, they beat, well, oh, well, Oklahoma lost to Texas and Notre Dame beat Texas. So that means Notre Dame is better than Oklahoma. It's strictly who is playing the best football and who in a playoff atmosphere would win. Iowa is not the fifth best team in the country, subjectively. If it's a BCS, if it's a number system, then maybe. I can understand if you're like, well, I'm sorry, brother. The computers just say they're five. That's just how the numbers roll. It's like, all right, well, that's an algorithm that I don't understand. But if we're looking at it subjectively, and we're looking at it by just the team on the field, body of work, who they've played, how good they are, the talent on the field, all that stuff, Iowa is not the fifth best team in the nation, and Notre Dame is not the fourth best team in the nation. Oklahoma State and Oklahoma are better than both of those teams. Now, I'm not expecting the committee to just mimic my top five every week. That's not the problem. This is what Vegas believes, and Vegas knows a whole lot more than I do, and Vegas knows a whole lot more than the committee does. Vegas believes that Oklahoma, the number seven ranked team in the college football playoffs, would be a three-point favorite over Notre Dame, the number four team, They'd be a six-point favorite over the number five team, Iowa, and a two-and-a-half-point favorite over Oklahoma. And by that same logic, that means that Vegas believes that Oklahoma State is also better than Notre Dame and Iowa. I think I said that wrong. Oklahoma would be a minus two-and-a-half-point favorite over Oklahoma State. I think I said I think I said Oklahoma would be a favorite over Oklahoma, which doesn't make any sense. But if they're only a 2.5 point favorite over Oklahoma State, that means Oklahoma State is favored over Notre Dame, over Iowa. So Vegas believes that 6 and 7 are better than 4 and 5. And I do too. And that's what I've been saying on this podcast. And that's the problem with the playoffs. Because if the playoffs, if the playoffs, it's like fool's gold, right? They're dangling this Iowa at 5 thing. And they know, they know that Ohio State and Iowa can't be 3 and they can't be 5. They know that. Yet, every week, they bring Iowa out there. They put Iowa on the bubble at 5 and say, hey, man, here you are at 5. And if you're sitting there going, well, they're undefeated. They're undefeated Iowa. Who haven't played anybody. What about undefeated Oklahoma State? Why is undefeated Oklahoma State at 6 if Iowa's at 5 and Oklahoma State just throttled 
throttled TCU. You don't have an answer? Because I don't have an answer. Why is one loss to Notre Dame ahead of Iowa? If that's what we're going by. The undefeated, the undefeated. I don't know. I don't have an answer. Because it's obviously subjective if Bama is two and Ohio State is three. It's obviously subjective. It's people. It's some group with Condoleezza Rice and whoever else. I know Pat Hayden was on there. I don't know if he's... Or not Pat Hayden. Uh, Oliver Luck was on there. I think he might have got out of that piece. I don't even know anymore. They flip-flop. Archie Manning was on there. He gone. What I believe is that Oklahoma should be in the top five. I believe they should be in the top four. I think right now Oklahoma is just about the best team in the country. Oklahoma, Clemson, and Bama are pretty damn close. But that is that. We have more to talk about. I'm not going to do another 20-minute rant like I did on Ronda Rousey last week, which y'all obviously like because we had a ton of ton of uh, interaction, ton of views, ton of listens, all that stuff. And uh, the podcast is kicking. It's kicking. We're, we're dominating your local sports media. Your local sports radio station is really close, man. They're really close to, to hearing who we are because we're jacking their listeners left and right. They don't even know it. Let's go to winners. Let's go to winners. Who wants to win some money? NCAA betting, we are fantastic. We are 25 and 10 on the year. 25 and 10. We give three picks a week. NFL, not so much. We've worked ourselves all the way. At one point, we were 17 and 9, 19 and 12, 15 and 6, and we worked our way back to 27 and 27, exactly 500. We went two and three last week in the NFL, three and zero in college. Still a winning week. Just saying. College, college picks: Tennessee, Missouri under forty two and a half. Uh, y'all, y'all know how we roll on SEC unders. We just take them, no questions asked. We just take SEC unders. They were like six and zero last week in unders. The SEC is a piss poor conference to watch. It is miserable to watch that conference. Best conference in football? I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to say that. Next game, Southern Miss, minus 21 against Old Dominion at home at the Rock in Hattiesburg. Last home game, Southern Miss is thrashing opponents. They're dominating people. It's nasty, okay? What they're doing to people is disgusting. They're not afraid to drop 21 in the first quarter. Old Dominion is not a good team at all. Southern Miss is covering that. Go ahead and jump on it. Last game, Texas A&M minus 6.5 against Vanderbilt. At Vandy, excuse me. I don't think Vanderbilt's a good team. They play teams tough. They play teams tight. Their defense isn't bad. They just can't score. And you have to believe that someone has something going on. He's too good of a coach with too many recruits to just squeak by Vanderbilt. If they just squeak by Vanderbilt, oh, it's not going to be good. And the only way they squeak by Vanderbilt is if Vanderbilt scores about 40 points which isn't going to happen. So the only other way is that they hold them to about three points, and Vanderbilt ain't holding Texas A&M to three points. So the three picks are Tennessee, Mizzou, under 42.5, Southern Miss minus 21, and A&M minus 6.5 at the University of Vanderbilt. Let's go to the NFL. I've been ice cold, okay? I have lost the Midas touch in the NFL. It's because all these damn backup quarterbacks. It's because I have to watch Blaine Gabbert and... Taylor Yates and uh, Case Keenum and Matt Hasselbeck and Kirk Cousins. These are real people. Tyrod Taylor, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Geno Smith. I can name all these people that that have played. That's who people who have played this year. Zach Mettenberger. I mean, it's awful. The people that have played, Landry Jones, the people that have played the quarterback position in the NFL this year are terrible. That's why we can't figure out a winner because we don't know who the hell, who the hell is playing. Morning games, Washington and Carolina under 45. Carolina is a great under team because their defense is so stout and they run the ball so effectively with Cam Newton and they eat up clock. And Ron Rivera is a very – he's a guy that takes his time up and down the field. Washington is one of those teams that gets overwhelmed quick or Kirk Cousins can look fantastic. I'm thinking this is another Carolina patented 21-13 kind of slugfest. 
Next, Baltimore at home. Minus two and a half against St. Louis. St. Louis, Nick Foles isn't playing, which actually probably is okay with them. But but Case Keenum is starting. All right? It's in Baltimore. Ty Gurley is going to run the ball 35 times. Baltimore sucks. Baltimore's an awful team. Two bad teams, two bad quarterbacks. I'm thinking... I'm thinking this one could be ugly. Only thing that could kill us is defensive touchdowns. I'm still taking the uh, the Ravens here. Ravens win a bit of a slosh. I mean, all they got to do is win by three. They can win by three. I'm thinking, let's go ahead and call this thing what it is, 23-20 Ravens. Then, afternoon game, Tampa Bay, Philly, under a 45. Tampa Bay don't score. And Philly is going to Mark Sanchez. So they got a new quarterback. Tampa Bay is a stingy enough of a defense. I'm going with the under in the game of 45. Sunday night, Arizona minus five at home against Cincinnati. Cincinnati loses to Houston. The Red Rocket turned into the Red Rifle BB gun. I'm thinking he's shook. I'm thinking he's a little shook, my man. Andy Dalton is not a primetime player. He likes to play at, uh, at noon. When no one's watching, just a regional broadcast, that's when he likes to play. He don't want to play on Monday night. He don't want to play on Sunday night. He don't want to play in the playoffs. He don't want to play in the Super Bowl. Guess where they are tonight, or this Sunday? Sunday night football in Arizona. Long way away. Andy Dalton's already shook up from the J.J. Watt thing where he totally overreacted to J.J. Watt's comments. More of that is going to come. The Bengals dropping two in a row. They're losing to the Cardinals. Write it down. Monday night. I actually was a little torn on this game. New England's playing Buffalo in New England. Rex Ryan has a thing with the Patriots and feet. But we're going to talk about the Patriots, not the feet thing. Because I still got to eat. But I think Rex Ryan is a clown. I think he's just kind of losing it. And the Patriots are on an absolute tear. An absolute kill everybody tour, like Barstool Sports says. They're just throttling people. Tom Brady cannot be stopped. That, that second half against the Giants is just ultimate Patriots. When they have to, they're going to turn it on. Whatever they need to happen, going to happen. Bet on the Patriots. Bet New England minus seven against Buffalo. Are you really going to take Rex Ryan? Are you really going to take Tyrod Taylor over Tom Brady? Are you really going to take Rex Ryan over Bill Belichick? At home? We're taking Tom Brady all day of the week, every day of the week. That is your winners. Now, we're going to finish the show. We're actually super early. I don't know how long this last segment is going to take, but we're super early right now. Um, we've only been about 20 minutes, and uh, we try to do this in about 30. So, Mike, get out of here early, boys. Mike, get out of here early to enjoy your Fridays. Episode 10 of Out of Bounds. So, 20 episodes ago. Five weeks. Because, No. I don't know. Something like that. We, no, 10 weeks. Yeah, 10 weeks ago. Long time. 10 weeks ago, we did 10 bold predictions for for the NFL. And I'm going to revisit those because it's a little more than the halfway mark, so we can see how we did it. And we can remember to think about this while we're watching the games. Number one, Adrian Peterson will be close to 2,000 yards. Right now, he has right at 1,000 with five touchdowns. So, we're a little under the 2,000-yard mark, but we're he, he's leading the league in rushing. So, I'm going to give myself a point on that. You know, Adrian Peterson, I, I, I'm trying, I was trying to say he was going to have a bounce-back year, and he certainly is, and the Vikings are awesome. Next, number two, Derek Carr plus Amari Cooper equals Montana and Rice. If there's one thing you know, it's that I love Derek Carr. And I like the Raiders because what they're doing. They've taken a step back as of late. They're losing some games. But if they can keep building in the draft like this, they are going to be good for a long time. They're not Montana and Rice, but the Cooper Carr connection is real. That's definitely a point for me. Number three, Odell Beckham will struggle. Look, Odell Beckham is the real deal. He has emerged as top flight wide receiver. Can't argue that. Can't argue it. You know, do I want to say that I was right? I do want to say I was right, but I wasn't because he's incredible. 
He has eight touchdowns in five games over 100 yards receiving. And everyone knows that they're throwing him the ball. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows every week Odell Beckham's getting the ball. And he's incredible. He's a hell of a player. And he, I mean, the like the Patriots game, stats were a little inflated. He had like an 80-yard reception. Besides that, Malcolm Butler held him in check. But what can I say? Number four, RG3 will never start again for Washington. That's a good old-fashioned check. I'm surprised he's still on the team, honestly. I don't know why teams like Dallas didn't go get him when they needed a quarterback. For seven games, you think RG3 would have done as bad as Brandon Whedon and Matt Castle? I don't think so. Why he's not in Houston? you got to remember, he's from Texas. So why he's not in Houston right now, I have no idea. But that's, that's a point. Number five, this is probably the worst one. Jadavian Clowney will lead the league in sacks. He, uh, he has one sack. He is non-existent. I don't even know if he plays, to be honest. Uh, that's why you don't draft a defensive player that high. Bottom line. Best defensive player in the league, arguably J.J. Watt. Best defensive rookie we've seen in years. They said he was so good he should sit out his senior year of college. And what happened? He's a non-existent pro who does absolutely nothing. And Dominican Sue, highest paid player in the league, playing for Miami. What's he done? Absolutely nothing. Defensive players are getting weeded out. There's no point in paying them that kind of money anymore in an offensive game. Number six, Seahawks will come back to earth. They're four and five right now. Who wants to come over here and kiss the ring? I called that. You can't lose that many people. They lose players. Cam Chancellor sits out. They lose Browner. They lose uh, the other cornerback. Marshawn Lynch plays every once in a while. He's been hurt. Jimmy Graham's awful. They're not. They're just not as good. It happens. People label them some dynasty. People label them the best defense of all time. People label label them like the Ravens. They're not those teams. They're not. They're not that. And Russell Wilson may not be the player we thought. Maybe Russell Wilson isn't the guy that we thought. Maybe he was the guy who had an incredible defense, an incredible running back, and caught the whole world sleeping. But then again, maybe he was a guy who was pretty damn close to back-to-back Super Bowls. Maybe that was a team that was pretty damn close to back-to-back Super Bowls. And knocking off Peyton Manning and Tom Brady in those back-to-back bowls. So, maybe that's it too. I don't know. But I do know they came back to earth. I do know they're 4-5. and five, And I do know they'll probably miss the playoffs. Number 7, Peyton Manning will retire at the end of the season. He retired now, son. He tore his, pl- his plantar fasciitis or whatever. or He tore something down there in his foot. And he looked like garbage. He's lucky that he tore something. He might not have even tore anything. He might, he might just said, ah, coach, we ain't doing this anymore. He's terrible. So that's the biggest check mark of all time. Eight, Andrew Luck wins MVP. What do you mean to do? He's hurt. He lacerated his kidney. Have, have a soul. He probably would have done it if he wouldn't have been broken his ribs and tore his kidney and tore his shoulder and all this other stuff. Number nine, TJ Yeldon wins Rookie of the Year. Hard to say at this point, but he's playing pretty damn good. 133 attempts, 531 yards, only only one touchdown. But Jacksonville's getting better. Uh, Blake Bortles looks like the real deal. If they can get a little bit more help down there, that's a team that, with Bortles, could help. With Bortles and Mariota in that division, Luck could see some competition in a few in a few years here. And number 10, Cardinals sneaky Super Bowl team. Right now, they might be the best team in the NFC. I don't think anyone would argue that. They beat Seattle in Seattle in a slugfest. Uh, they beat teams all the time. They had some bad losses, but they had some talented players. They're very talented secondary. They're, they're a good team. They could easily win the NFC. If you told me they would win the NS, NFC at this point, I would say that's not surprising at all. So they are most certainly a Super Bowl team. We did great today. Look at that. Look at that time. Good God. We're getting out of here early, boys. This might be the earliest show you've ever done. And I purposely eliminated topics because I thought the 10 bold predictions were going to take forever. Before we leave, we must say goodbye. Rob Ryan was fired from the New Orleans Saints. Uh, it was kind of a weird way they did it. They fired him, then they didn't fire him, then they fired him, then they didn't fire him. Then Sean Payton said he wasn't fired, then he fired him. So we saw, we saw this coming. Uh, it's obvious the Saints front office listens to the podcast. We say what's going on, the Saints do it. So, so shouts to the Saints. Shouts to everyone for listening to us and for uh, Rob Ryan's departure. Rob, 
thank you for the worst defenses in the league for the past couple years here. Thank you for losing us games by giving up 40-something points. Uh, thank you for your hair. Um, let's see, thank you for uh, Brandon Browner and Delvin Bro. Thank you for Jarius Bird. Um, thank you for getting rid of Ju- uh, Junior Gallette. Thank you for these things. Rob Ryan will miss you. We'll miss you dearly. I hope that you succeed uh, in, ball- in uh, Buffalo or wherever the hell you go. But your days in New Orleans as defensive coordinator are done. Hopefully, Sean Payton is following him. And hopefully, Sean Payton uh, will walk out of that door soon enough and Brian Kelly can enter as head coach and I can go over there and be Brian Kelly's right-hand man and we can be best friends forever. Brian Kelly to New Orleans. Start the trend. Can we get a hashtag, people? Hashtag it. Hashtag it. Brian Kelly to New Orleans. Let's get that man. Let's get that man. Brian Kelly to New Orleans. Brian Kelly, if you're listening, I love you. You'd be a great coach in New Orleans. I will be at your press conference if you show up. I'll be the guy in the tuxedo. Guys, the podcast couldn't be doing any better. We're on Stitcher now. Don't forget to go on the app. Don't forget to find us and rate and review. It's very, very important for their ranking system. This is a website and app that only deals with podcasts, not like iTunes that has other stuff. So if we're highly ranked, we will be competing with Bill Simmons' podcast, Nerdist, Mark Marin, all these people. The only way that's going to happen, though, is if the fans of this show, the loyal listeners of this show, rate and review us on Stitcher. Get the noise, get the whole thing out there. Let's blow this thing up. Let's take over the sports media. We've already taken over local sports media. We're twice as good as anyone else you're listening to. So thanks, guys, again. I am your host, James Comedy. Have a great, fantastic rest of your Friday. Have a great weekend. This is another episode of Out of Bounds. I'll see you on Monday, guys. Mm-hmm.